Hello all, welcome to The Mudroom, our weekly free and live Uncommon Sense parenting class. So if you're watching, please say hello, let me know you're here. If you're watching the replay, give me a replay in the comments. For those of you who are new, please allow me to introduce myself. I'm Alana Robinson and I'm a parenting effectiveness coach. I work with parents of toddlers and preschoolers helping them understand why their children are misbehaving and how to fix it without yelling, shaming, or using timeouts. So I'm your host here on The Mudroom. I also host my free peer support Facebook group, The Parenting Posse, which just today reached 5,000 members. Yes. And finally, I host the Parentability Program, where we figure out where your child thrives and what skills need some more support, and we create a plan to develop those skills. So, oh, okay, I think we're good. Yeah, sorry, I had an error message on my screen. <laughs> so if you're watching, please let me know that this is working because that just freaked me out a little bit. Technology and I aren't best friends. <laughs> I try to, but it doesn't always work. Okay, so tonight I want to talk about something that my clients and I have been talking a lot about. Um, we've been talking about putting on your own oxygen mask first a lot lately. Things we do for ourselves that help keep us keep, help us keep our heads above water so that we don't get hyper aroused and therefore send our kids into hyper arousal and make good behavior absolutely impossible. So the conversation around self-care is always... It's always been very big, I find. You know, spa days and girls' nights and hiring a cleaning lady and going for a massage and gym memberships. And don't get me wrong, I am all for those things, 100%. But it can be really discouraging if big ticket things like that aren't in your budget right now. It can feel like you don't, if you don't have some cash to toss around, that. You don't deserve to fill your cup or that, you know, staying calm is inaccessible to you, which makes it really hard to contemplate a lot of these strategies that require you to stay calm, which pretty much all uncommon sense strategies do. Because if you're like, well, if I can't afford to hit the gym or go get a mani-pedi, then I'm screwed. So we need to change that conversation to things that we do routinely to help us live our lives less stressfully. Remember, stress is anything that you expend energy on. That's our definition of stress. So self-care really is just creating routines that allow you to spend less energy through the day so that when challenging circumstances crop up, you still have gas in the tank to deal with them without, you know, hitting the roof. Hey, Brianna! So after sifting through a bunch of old posts, I realized that there's really four categories of things that my clients have identified as things that they do to help them stay calm, to help them expend less energy. So the first thing is making things concrete. Abstract concepts require more energy to process than concrete ones. When we are constantly having to think about abstract concepts, it's going to drain our energy way faster and it's going to drain our children's energy way faster. That's, that's just the long and the short of it. It takes a lot more brain power. So by making abstract things like time, space, and expectations concrete, we just naturally reduce the amount of energy we have to expend for both us and for our children. So, and then, you know, this is kind of a double-edged sword because making abstract things concrete does require us to expend a bit more energy up front, but it's a trade-off. If you can expend that energy once, it saves you energy in the long run. A favorite way of doing this for my clients is visuals. We have an entire episode on visuals and on the time timer, which is another kind of category of visuals. Using that timer is another great one. So the first one is making abstract expectations, routines, very concrete. 
The second thing is taking a deep breath. So I know that this is going to sound extremely asinine, <laughs> but it is really important. Deep breathing helps us switch on the cognitive thinking centers of our brains. It gets more oxygen into our bloodstream and our brain, our brain has a bit of a hierarchy. It prioritizes oxygen to the parts that are necessary for physical survival. As much as we like it, thinking isn't necessary for survival. It's nice, but it's not going to save us when a bear attacks, even if that bear is in the form of our two-year-old in the middle of an epic meltdown. And when we aren't thinking, we tend to react in non-ideal ways because we're acting on instinct. So many parents in the posse, on calls, here on the mudroom, tell me that they can't remember the steps to the LCP in the moment. Well, that's because when we're hyper aroused, that thinking part of our brain shuts off. You can't remember it because where it's stored is being deprived of the resources it needs in a bid to keep you safe. So we need to turn it back on. And we do that by breathing. Big, deep belly breaths. In for a count of six, out for a count of eight. It's the breathing out that is actually organizing for us. Nick Russell taught me that. And it works. Take some deep breaths. Gives yourself a hot second before you react. There is nothing, unless the house is on fire or someone is in physical danger, there is absolutely nothing that you need to react to instantly. So once you take some deep breaths, then you can spring into action, but chances are you won't feel the need to jump in quite as quickly anymore. So that's two, right? Taking deep breaths and making abstract things concrete. Third is to give yourself permission to not always be calm. I get comments all the time from people who are like, how are you so calm when your child is losing his shit in public? I hit the roof. Well, I mean, see the point I just made about deep breaths, but also I give myself full permission to not always be calm. You know, I get my kids home, I put them in the yard or I set them up watching TV and then I go kick the ever-loving shit out of my punching bag. That is how I melt down. I don't, don't melt down on my kids. I tear that punching bag to shreds. That is my not calm time. <laughs> I am not required to be calm. I give myself space and permission to let it out. People become chronically stressed when they don't have a sustainable way to let frustration out or they bottle it all up and expect something big like a spa day to be the cure-all or they bottle it all up and expect wine to melt it away. That's not how this works. If you aren't losing your shit, good for you, but make an appointment with yourself to do it soon. You know, some people run it off. That is not me. If I am running, you should run too because I am being chased. Some people stretch it out in yoga. Some people dance it out. Massages are great. But unless you're a Kardashian, chances are you can't get one every time you want to blow your lid. Wine is fine. But as much as people joke about it, myself included, it really shouldn't be used as a coping mechanism because if you have a glass of wine every time you're losing your cool with your kids, you're very quickly going to tip over into alcoholic territory. Find something that lets you blow off the steam you need to blow off and give yourself full permission to do it. Make space to do it. So the last thing, hold on, recap. Give yourself permission to not be calm all the time. Make concrete, make abstract, things concrete. Oh shoot, my train of thought just left the station. <laughs> concrete. And what was the second one that I talked about? I can't remember. You'll have to go back and see. Okay, the last thing is to understand. And this is really the whole premise behind everything I do here on Uncommon Sense Parenting. 
It's really just to help you understand how your child's brain works. The thing about understanding is that when we know why something is happening, what's causing a behavior, it really takes the heat off of it. It's not a mystery anymore, so you're not expending energy trying to figure it out in the moment. The human brain is kind of funny in that it really likes stories. It likes plots. It likes a nice, cohesive narrative. And if there's holes in the plot, our very resourceful brains will fill them in. And it will fill them in with the most obvious explanation. That's Occam's razor, right? The most obvious answer is generally the correct one. The catch with that is that something can only be obvious if you already know it. If it's already knowledge you have. What is obvious is very subjective to each individual person. So it really is important to invest in understanding child development because if you truly understand child development, the more obvious answer is going to be very different than if you don't. This played out so many times for me when I was in early intervention. I'd look at a child doing something and then I'd go and respond, generally in a way that nobody was expecting me to respond. And they'd all go, how did you know to do that? What was obvious to me as a developmental specialist was not necessarily obvious to everyone else in the room. Their Occam's razor was going, this child is being a shit. My Occam's razor was going, oh, this kid is having difficulty with this because whatever, she has Down syndrome. And, you know, she's having difficulty with something that is a core deficit of Down syndrome. Here, let's modify it this way to make it easier for her. Oh, look, behavior gone. Do not discount the power of understanding your child. If your child is doing something that is raising your blood pressure daily, that is like a big old X marking the spot where to dig. Find someone, <coughs> me, that can help you understand what is going on. And then learn from them. Figure out what that thing is, and you will figure out the behavior. Okay. How is everyone feeling about all that? Does it shock you that none of this is like woo-woo, burning incense, meditation, shoving crystals in your bra kind of stuff? That staying calm doesn't necessarily mean being Mother Earth? What are some things that you would add to this list? What are some things that help you stay calm that don't cost you any precious coin, at least not on a regular basis? I did have to buy my punching bag or more than one punching bag, but <laughs> it's a one time or it's an investment that lasts me a very long time. So I would love to know that in the comments. And if you want some concrete strategies for starting down this path, don't forget that the scripts for managing crazy making behavior are up in the description. They're really your toe dip into uncommon sense parenting strategies and they are totally free and you can get them wherever, wherever the description happens to lie on whatever device you're watching on. <laughs> okay, that's it for me this evening. Have a great week, everyone, and I will see you next week for another Uncommon Sense Parenting class.